I've been moving house lately, which means that all my lab equipment has been packed away in boxes. I'm really only just getting things set up now. It's still a little messy, but at least uh, things are basically functional. During the time I haven't been posting, though, something notable has happened, which is that I've clicked over 100 subscribers to these videos. Um, that's really amazing to me and quite delightful. So I had no idea, really, that anybody might be interested in these. I was documenting things for my own purposes as much as anything else. And so the fact that other people are interested is um, really very nice. And I want to thank everybody for all the supportive comments that I've received um, along the way. And since we did click over 100, that seems like a, um, a notable milestone, I felt I should post something to show you what I've been up to even while I haven't been working on hardware because I have at least been working on some software. So the software I've been writing is an assembler. Um, if you've watched other videos, you know that all the software I've been writing for the MITE, or almost all the software for the MITE, has been written in 6502 Assembler. But the way I've been doing that is using a cross-assembler, which means I write, the, edit the text, and I actually do the assembly um, on my laptop, and then I copy the files over to the 6502. Um, I didn't have a way of uh, writing software direct, not for the an assembly language directly on the computer in a self-hosted manner, and that's what I wanted to do. Most of the assemblers you find online are cross-assemblers that run under Windows or Mac OS or Linux. Um, most of them are not for the 6502 itself, and so that's what I've been writing. I wanted it to be to have two modes to be an interactive assembler, but also to be able to read and write files. Um, and so I've been writing it in such a way that it should be able to do both. I haven't implemented the file part yet. Um, I'll use the routines I've already written for my SD card to uh, enable it to do that. Um, but I can demonstrate for you how the interactive part of the assembler works. Um, so let's just fire it up here. Um, and then um, it's prompting us with 0000, which is the base address where it will assemble the, the programs that I type at it. That's not terribly useful. I don't want to assemble them to the zero page. So let's, um, let's reset that pointer to somewhere more useful. And then you can just start typing the kinds of 6502 instructions that you might expect. So there's LDA45, um, SDA1234, um, CLC, all the sort of like the instructions in the usual format. Now, I am running this on a 6.5C02 CMOS processor, and um, on the CMOS processor did incorporate some new instructions beyond the original NMOS 6.502, and so I've put those in here as well. So we could do STZ3456. Um, STZ is a 6.5C02 instruction that stores zero in a, in a location. So we can type those um, instructions, and if it sees something at the beginning of the line that is not um, an instruction, then it will interpret that as a label um, and um, mark a point so that we can write a loop like this. Now, um, labels only work as backward references, so um, you can't refer to a label. I couldn't do a jump to a label that I have not yet defined. I know how I'm going to fix that. I, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. But for the moment, labels are only um, backward pointers. But we can also use labels as variables and do some um, basic arithmetic on them. So uh, I suppose I want to say that here's um, a, a zero page location that's going to be a vector that I'm going to store. And um, I can like you know load something from, um, from that location. Um, notice, by the way, it's recognized that that's a zero page location, so it's assembled that as A5, which is the zero page mode um, LDA instruction. And I can also, for instance, you know, type PRVEC plus one, um, and uh, it will do the basic arithmetic on the, on the label and add one to it. It's not a full expression evaluator, but it's enough to do the sorts of things that you need for most assembly language programs. And so that means like bitwise operations so that you can mask data um, and, uh, you know, adding one and adding to you know, some basic sort of uh, you know basic arithmetic to be able to um, to to make your life a little bit easier as a programmer. Um, I've also added uh, we saw the .org 
assembler directive at the start. That's not the only directive we have. We have some other directives that are more for um, the interactive use and for allowing the programmer to see what's going on. So for instance, I could uh, dump some memory um, and you can see, there we go, A9458D3412. That's the part of memory we've been um, assembling this program into. So you can examine memory to make sure it's uh, behaving the way you want. Um, and in fact, we could um, disassemble that. So I've got a disassembler that I originally wrote for my monitor. And we can um, uh, use that. And you know we'll see LDA45, STA1234. Those are the, the things I've been doing as I've been um, typing those commands. So, so we've got a disassembler running as well. OK, so why don't we use this to write a little program just so you can see it, uh, see it running. I'm actually going to um, quit out and restart um, to do this for reasons I won't bother to go into right now. Um, so we can write a small program that doesn't really do very much, but is just enough to show that it's working. So it's going to sort of load some data from 4000 to the E, um, indexed by Y, and it's going to store it at 4100, um, indexed by Y, um, and then we'll compare Y to uh, sort of C, um, and if it hasn't gotten there, then we'll go back through the loop, but if it has, then we'll exit. Um, and then let's give it a little uh, data to work with here. 656C, 6C, 2C, give it a little more. Um, to be fair, you might be able to, uh, we might recognize a couple of these um, uh, data points so you can figure out maybe what my program is doing. Um, so there we go, we've got the program. Uh, we know that it's going to write some something into 4100. So let's just have a quick look at 4100 to see what's there right now. Um, and the answer is a lot of nonsense because I just reset the computer. Um, and so let's run our little program at 4000. Okay, comes back, and if we look at 4100 again, we see a little message saying, hello 6502. So we've, uh, we've gotten a message, and we've done that by running a program that we assembled directly on the, on the computer here. Um, so that's just uh, something to show you to celebrate the milestone of crossing over 100 subscribers. It's not terribly interesting, but it's been fun. Um, uh, hopefully next time I've got a video to post, I will have something a little more exciting. I really want to get to um, doing the video circuit with the TMS9918 um, uh, video generator. And so that's the next thing I'll be doing. I've ordered a couple of parts that I need to be able to do that that should arrive about the same time as I get back from um, a trip I'm about to take. Um, and as soon as I've got something to show you, um, I will post another video.